The last couple of years, we've uh, started to incorporate a drone into our prescribed fire operations to, uh, to do a lot of interior ignition operations. So I wanted to look at a recent burn we did to uh, see how uh, we did that. If we look at a map of the, uh, the burn unit, it's about 300 acres, sand roads on three sides and a mode line transitioning into more of a two track on the west side with a, uh, a wetland feature in the uh, interior. If we look at the staffing for this particular burn, we had 15 people total. This is fairly typical of a project we do of this size. Uh, we had two folks assigned to the drone itself and uh, we had a burn boss. So essentially we had 12 people uh, committed to uh, the actual operations on the line with uh, folks broken out into two squads. While we use the drone to do the bulk of the interior firing operations, um, in reality, the staffing level probably wouldn't change a whole lot. Um, it's just the folks assigned to the drone would be uh, would be part of the interior hand ignition operation along with a couple other folks peeled off of the squads. If we take a quick look at the uh, spot weather forecast for the day, uh, we had favorable conditions, relative humidities in the 30% range, and south and southwest winds forecast. This map indicates the, uh, the actual firing patterns for the day with the, uh, the red being the hand ignition and the uh, orange color being the, uh, the drone ignitions. The south end of R32, so R32 is a sharp turn. Yeah. Once you get down there just a little bit that. further, um, I can stop right here. The bottom end of this grid, that's my trigger point. You tell me when you get there, I'm gonna send the drone up and let the drone start flying this. All right. And you all are making pretty good progress. So by the time they do that, then they'll even be able to, you know. Because you're it's gonna change once you all get down around there. Pretty hot. All right, so they have fire. There's a drainage right here. They have fire to there. Okay. You all have fire to here. That's correct. Uh, I want them. They they wanted to fly V6 and mm -hmm. then move. Yeah. I don't have time for that. Let's let's try to do this as efficiently as possible. So what they're gonna do is try to get a little bit more into this, and I'll just drive him down there and try to fly as much of this as possible. And then once they're done flying, then you all can just walk fire right down the road. Oh, okay. Okay. So once that thing's in the air, the only the only tether is to that thing that James had. That's right? correct. So down here. Yeah, that's why so, we're burning this all out right yeah. now. This map indicates the uh, the final firing operation down the south line with uh, the bulk of the interior black or uh, ignited already. If your plan is to uh, do the perimeter ignition by hand and then leave the interior ignition to the drone, what happens if uh, the drone has a problem or is inoperable? We had that, uh, that very issue happen the next day on a burn. So what's the ramifications of that? Well, at the very least, uh, you're not meeting your objectives because uh, you're not getting the entire unit ignited. Um, if time and weather are on your side, you uh, the fire itself may progress through the unit and complete uh, what you're trying to do. But leaving a prescribed fire to kick around on its own can, uh, can come back to bite you as past and uh, some present events indicate. 